As you probably know by now, Donald Trump has been claiming something so extreme, so far-fetched, and so absurd, you think it would have been laughed out of the court. That is, of course, Trump's arguments that presidents are immune from criminal prosecution for practically anything they may do while in office. And I literally mean anything. In fact, according to Trump's lawyers, that immunity is so broad, it allows a president to assassinate a political rival and face virtually zero consequences. That's the argument they've been making. But as ridiculous as that may be, the question of presidential immunity is now before the Supreme Court, which delayed Trump's federal trial in D.C. and is set to hear his appeal later this month. Their decision and the timing of that decision could determine whether Trump is ever held accountable for his actions on and around January 6th. Now, in a scathing, I mean scathing, I've been reading it, rebuke of the former president, special counsel Jack Smith is hitting back hard. In a filing with the Supreme Court that came down literally minutes ago, good thing I'm a fast reader, and so is Lisa Rubin and Sherilyn Eiffel, prosecutors stated that, quote, the president's constitutional duty to take care that the laws be faithfully executed does not entail a general right to violate them. Smith shreds Trump's argument that criminal statutes somehow don't apply to presidents, saying, quote, that radical suggestion, which would free the president from virtually all criminal law, even crimes such as bribery, murder, treason, and sedition, is unfounded. And there's a lot more, and we're going to get into it right now, because joining me now is MSNBC legal correspondent Lisa Rubin and Sherilyn Eiffel, former president of the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, two brilliant female legal eagles. So grateful to be here with both of you. Lisa, I just want to start with you. I, I know this literally just came down minutes ago, but you're both <laughs> brilliant lawyers. I'm so grateful you for, to you both for being here. Give me your immediate reaction to this new filing from the special counsel. You know, Jen, the thing that struck me immediately is some of the concessions that are here, because some of these arguments we've seen before, right? This is the third time that the special counsel's office is briefing this issue of presidential immunity before federal courts in this federal election interference case before Judge Chutkin. But for the first time, they are encountering a Supreme Court that could side with Donald Trump on more than one issue here, or more than one subpart of what's being decided. And so you see, starting at page eight, them make a sort of new argument that even if the court holds, and I'm reading from the brief here, that a former mm -hmm. president is entitled to some immunity from criminal prosecution for official acts, that principle does not preclude trial on this indictment. And then they make a number of sub-arguments. They're saying the specific thing that he's been charged with here, efforts to subvert an election in violation of the term of office clause of Article 2 and the constitutional process for electing a president, is basically so serious that even if the court decides some form of immunity is necessary and justifiable for former presidents, it's not on these facts with these allegations of these crimes. But the second thing that they say is, look, if he's saying that he's entitled to immunity for official acts and you somewhat agree with him, note that most of what we're alleging here is, in fact, private conduct. This guy was acting in his capacity as a candidate. And even if he did certain things in that capacity that involved sitting in the Oval Office or the White House and taking what looks like official acts, he was really involved in a conspiracy with private actors for his own private and personal aim. So I think what you're seeing here from Jack Smith and his team are a number of different concessions designed to preserve their case even if a majority of this court or a plurality of this court decide that former presidents are entitled to some form of presidential immunity. Now, that's so interesting, Lisa. Thank you for breaking that down as you did. And I also, as a non-lawyer, it struck me the emphasis, as you just referenced, on kind of as a private citizen. It really goes into that, or not as acts of his official acts. Sherilyn, I know we've talked about immunity in this case so much, but it's important to remind people, why is that differentiation important? And also, what stuck out to you in the portions of this you've been able to read? Yeah, thanks, Jen. You know, uh, Trump has always wanted to, um, he, he wants to be Teflon when it comes to the law. He does not want it to apply to him. And he has always had a conception of his role as the president that it somehow constitutes a lifelong immunity from accountability. And for that reason, um, Lisa, I think, did a great job of describing the filing today. I found this incredibly depressing. And the reason I found the filing depressing is because this is a case with no legs. Uh, mm -hmm. This was dealt with in great detail by the Court of Appeals. 
This should have been summarily handled by the Supreme Court. And it is a testament to how reckless this Supreme Court has become, mm -hmm. how unpredictable, how far out of the mainstream it has become, that the special counsel felt it was incumbent upon him to create backstops, to create mm -hmm. secondary and tertiary positions, because he could not trust that a majority of this Supreme Court would do what every other um, a clear, sane uh, jurist acting not in um, a political context, but acting in a pure legal con uh, context, would know had to be true, that our system of government was not created to ensure that one man would lack accountability, could rise to the highest level of uh, government in our country, and that would then constitute a cloak of, um, of impunity. Uh, this is just simply not, it, it's at odds with the very concept of our country. That's King George. And so um, it, this should have been a slam dunk. The fact that um, even Jack Smith clearly is concerned that given the Supreme Court, it may not be a slam dunk made me very uneasy reading this filing. That's such an important point. I mean, this is a thorough this is a lengthy brief here. It's it's not two pages. And he had to, as you just said, Sherilyn, really detail point by point by point here, even though experts like both of you have repeatedly said there's no basis here. I just want to dig into some of the other specific quotes here that stuck out to me. And you may have other ones, of course. Another expert from excerpt from this filing talks about precedent, as, we, as we've been talking about a little bit. Smith, Smith writes, quote, the absence of any prosecutions of former presidents until this case does not reflect the understanding that presidents are immune from criminal liability. It instead underscores the unprecedented nature of petitioners' alleged conduct. This is a, obviously, it's written in a legal brief. I think it is an important, powerful message point that could continue to be repeated. He's facing this, despite what Sherilyn just said about whether the Supreme Court should be arguing this or considering this case or not, because of his actions. Lisa, talk to me a little bit about that and why that was so important to include, or whether you agree that it was important to include, I guess. It was hugely important to include, in part because, Jen, that's a principal argument on which Donald Trump has relied, that in our nation's history, we have never seen a prosecution like this. And you know that some of the superlatives that come out of his mouth of the hyperbole is ever, you know, he's very fond of speaking in, never before have we seen this, or people always say, right? And one of the things that he has incorporated into his legal filings is, we've never seen anything like this before. So I think it was important for the special counsel to counter that and say, we haven't seen Seen this because nobody has acted in office like you have. And to your point about this becoming an important messaging tool, I've talked a lot about how the political and the legal appear to be collapsing in Trump's various cases, that things that come out of his mouth then manifest themselves in legal argument, even though, as you and I discussed on Friday night, they seem more like an opposition research document mm -hmm. than a legal brief. Now I think you're seeing the flip side of that, which is that Jack Smith in his quest to defend what should be easy for everybody to understand. Somebody allegedly broke the law and in a big way and is being called to account for that, even though that person was formerly the president of the United States. Jack Smith, in his legal filing, is now saying things that should and can be persuasive to the American people in taking back their power with respect to voting in November's election. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.